If you want to add custom behavior to an LLM, an MCP server can be a great way to go. And it turns out it's also super easy to declare one in Marimo. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you how you can set up a MCP server from within your Python notebook such that Claude Desktop can talk to it. So I am in a Marimo notebook over here, and this is a setup cell. That's a special kind of cell that allows you to define dependencies that have to be loaded before anything else runs. And it's also a way for Marimo to expose a global. The global in particular that we're interested in here, by the way, is this MCP variable. It comes from the fast MCP library. The library really feels a lot like fast API. It's just that instead of defining routes, you are defining tools that an LLM can talk to. So just as a example, I've got a function over here called roll dice. And this function expects a string expression of dice definitions. And I guess it's also good to show what I mean by that. Under the hood is using the dice library from Python. And what you could do, for example, is you could say, hey, I want to roll a d20, which is a 20 sided dice. And every time that I run this cell, you can see that a random number appears. But you can also roll more than one. So you could also roll five of these dice. There's also some special syntax. So you can do things like, hey, I want to have the lower two or the upper two rolls from that set. And I think what you could even do is do something like plus zero, and that way you get the sum out of everything. But we have a nice little syntax, kind of a domain-specific language of a string that can go in. And I would like to be able to do this from Claude, let's say. That's the that's a task that I have. So I have a Python function at my disposal that can do all of that. But in order to turn that into a tool that Claude could use, I do need to return a string in this case. So, so there's a little bit of extra logic that I'm doing to make sure that the stuff that goes out of this function is an actual string, and then Claude can use it. Now, the cool thing here is that this decorator is basically all you need. You can add a doc string to make it easier for Claude to understand when to roll this tool. But the name of the tool over here is going to be parsed in such a way that Claude should be able to figure that out. There's a few extra things I'm doing in this notebook. There's a couple of sanity checks that I'm doing here. And I've written this in base Python because there's a bunch of async stuff. But these are just some sanity checks that have to run. Down below over here, I've got this extra block that's going to loop over all the tools that are available in the client. Right now, there's just one tool because I just have this rule dice defined. But if you were to add more decorated functions, then you can also see more tools being made available here. And you can also see some things that were added, right? So the description is being shown over here. There's an input schema. You can see that it expects a string type. You can also see that the result is also going to be a string type that goes out. So these are all things that are generated on your behalf. And these are all things that Claude would need in order to call the tool. Then finally, what I'm doing at the bottom over here is I'm saying, look, if this notebook is being run in script mode, that is to say from the command line using UV run or Python, then I want you to actually run the MCP server. And kind of the cool trick here is that because a Marimo notebook is in the end just a Python file, you can actually just use it to package this MCP server. And the thing that I really like is a notebook is kind of nice and contained. You can add documentation. You can also add examples quite easily. So a Marimo notebook, especially if you're doing rapid prototyping, is actually kind of a convenient way to just play around with building an MCP server. But all of this is saved into a file called mymcp.py. That's all well and good, but let's now go to the terminal. So I'm on the terminal right now, and let's just open up that mymcp file. This is the file that contains the Marimo notebook. I ran the notebook in sandbox mode, so we get these very convenient dependencies on top. The Python version is defined. We also have the version numbers of all the packages that we need. So that's all super cool. And then if I scroll down, you can see the contents of that setup cell. There's a context manager over here, and here's the code that was in that first cell. So from the perspective of the Python script, this MCP variable is available. All the other cells in Marimo have this app.cell decorator, and there's a function under it. But I hope you can also appreciate that from the perspective of this one function, because MCP is declared globally, that's a variable that this cell could also go ahead and use. And therefore, Marimo will take care that if you just run this from the command line, you do actually start the MCP server. From here, the next thing we have to do is we have to make Claude Desktop aware of this fast MCP server. And the fast MCP library comes with a great helper that you can use from the command line. You have to call fast MCP and then the install command. From here, there's a bunch of apps pre-configured that you can make a quick install for. Claude Desktop is one of them. And then I'm saying, look, there's this my MCP file, and then the actual MCP server is in this variable. Note that MCP, that variable, is also the default. So in this case, you don't have to mention it. So I'm going to run this command. The one thing to keep in the back of your mind is if you're just running this in a normal Python script without dependencies attached, you might want to add some extra information with this dash dash with. And then you could do something like, oh, Marimo is a dependency and also Dice is a dependency, let's say. You can also add dependencies directly this way. For now, though, I think this should be fine. 
It's now confirming that this is installed. Now, the main thing that the first command did was just add a setting to a config file, and you can inspect what happened by going to library application support Claude and then Claude underscore desktop underscore config dot JSON. And when we have a look in here, we can see that technically all that's happening under the hood is we're just calling UV. We're saying UV run, and then with fast MCP, we're saying fast MCP run, and then a path to that file. There are some extra things you could also add. You can add the description. There's some things with environment variables that you could also do. But the main thing that's important to recognize is that we're just adding a little bit of information to that config file. That's the only thing that the fast MCP command from the terminal did. And now we can start Claude Desktop. Okay, so I'm in Claude Desktop now. If Cloud Desktop was already running, it would be good to restart it just to make sure that it actually got the changes in the config file. But now I should be able to just call roll and do something like 3D7. I can see that Cloud in this case is indeed picking up the tool. We are getting a warning. Please review the action carefully before approving. Cloud cannot guarantee the security or the privacy of third party integrations. This is an important warning, right? But I'm going to allow it for once. I can see that Claude code got some feedback and it then used that to generate the next text. It's saying, hey, you rolled three seven-sided dice and you got six, six, seven. You got a total number. That's a pretty good roll because it's a quite high number. It's actually good feedback, I suppose. And I, you know, I can also make it more complex. I could do something like roll 3d8 plus 3d10. I'm adding here, so I'm expecting a single number to come out. Let's allow. And in this case, I got a 21. Sweet. So there you go. This will work with Claude Desktop and there's tons of other LLMs and systems that you could integrate this with. The main thing that's good to remember is that if you're doing rapid prototyping, in general, Fast MCP is a very nice library and it works just fine from inside of a notebook. A notebook is nice and self-contained if you're doing experimentation because you can add docs and all that good stuff. If you feel like giving this a spin, I do recommend you check out the documentation. And in particular, if you go to the SDK reference, you can see all the types that this MCP server can emit. You can, for example, not just return text, you can also choose to return images or audio. And after you're done prototyping and you want to do it maybe more for realsies, it's also good to know that this library also supports authentication. So plenty of stuff to like, great for rapid prototyping. Give it a spin if you haven't already. And, and I also got to say, it's just pretty fun to add custom behavior to your conversations with Claude that you can fully control. Anyway, thanks for listening. The link in the show notes will have the notebook so you can repeat this yourself on your own machine. And if you haven't already, this is YouTube. So like and subscribe if you feel like it.